basically, um, my my dear friend that I work with, she's teaching me Israeli sign language while I'm helping her understand the songs. That's we're working with the songs, and uh, so we have to. I need is American sign language, and as I'm learning Israeli sign language, I've got more oh local. Like, wow. <laughs> uh, wow. To yeah. negotiate the pleading and try to figure out you know what. And there's not just one sign language. No, there's uh, more than 400 in the world. Four hundred? Wow. 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 Yeah. Still studying and discovering those things. Wow. Um, so that sometimes we actually, well, sometimes we'll write in Hebrew to each other as well because sometimes, you know, neither one of us will, we won't be getting through with the sign language, but the word that's in the song here in Hebrew, um, sometimes she will know. Sometimes she um, she doesn't often understand the meaning of that, or she understands maybe some of the words in the in the in that phrase, in that sentence. But she won't understand the, the, the overall message of what, what it's communicating. So, um, and I'll just briefly show you. Um, we, we've done about we've done over 20 songs in draft form, and we want to bring that to a publication so that others can um, uh, the other deaf can see these. Uh, I I don't want to have a, my friend. I work with a, a, a deaf woman, but we can't have her on video because in some of the the. Religious communities there that is <laughs> no, you just don't do that. You don't put a woman on video, and so um, <clears throat> so we want to uh, do this in a way that's honoring um, there, and that so we need, we're um, praying about a, a man to be the signer on the on the videotape, so that uh, it will be then acceptable. Anyone can, can and they won't be able to uh, have any criticism against the work that we're doing, and so. Um, and so there's different modes that we could publish it either in, in video, that's the main, that's the easiest way. But we're also looking at um, doing this in a written form. And because what happens is, so if a deaf person sees another deaf person on the video, they know who it is. Oh. So in, in the Bible, you don't see the, you don't see the, the original people that wrote it. Like, um, so what happens in the deaf community is that a deaf person comes to faith and they're signing, and uh, so they're telling the word, and, the, and another person goes, well, I know you. <laughs> I know, I just saw you the other the other week in that bar or whatever, or I saw you doing, you know, getting drunk or whatever, or, or whatever the sins are, and they go, well, I'm not gonna listen to you, because, you know, they see the, they, they see that, um, they see the, yeah, the carnality of that person. So having it in a written form, like we have in the Bible, you. You don't you don't see that you don't see that you just you don't see the original the, the, the people that are written you see the word you, you receive the word because it's, it's right. there's no other distraction you have the word so that's it we're um, looking at a way to do this in sign language and I'll just show you a, a, a book that so last summer I took a, a literacy course to try to figure out how we can put sign language in in writing and there are ways that they're experimenting with to put sign language in writing form. And um, so that way you just, you see the signing, you see the words, you get the meaning of it without the distraction of who it is that's doing the signing. Who the, uh, like who the, might be your neighbor or another, another person, anyway. Um, so does someone, uh, could someone read the beginning of Psalm 148? And then I'm gonna um, show a book. And also, <coughs> can help me to hold this while I sign it? Just someone that's a volunteer that could come up and hold this one. I'll hold it. You want to do it? Come on. sun and moon, praise him all ye stars of light. Verse 4. Praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that are that be above the heavens. Verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And so this is just, this is like a beginning primer for, for kids that are just learning how to read uh, sign language. And uh, so uh, <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, so let me get over here. I'm, I'm going to find this is like a it's, it's simple. There's a limited amount of time to do this, but uh, so this is just hallelujah. This is praise him. And so this is the head. The circle represents the head. 
these are the hands, and uh, and then these are the little. I, it's probably hard to see from back there, but anyway, it's the there's a uh, movement arrows. There are arrows going up that shows the hands go upward, and then this is him. So again, it's the head, and it's showing you the relative place of the hand next to the next to the head. Him. And then this is the same thing as the title. So for me, this is so. This is the sky. This is a cloud, and this is a, just very special for me because in the desert, um, when the, uh, you have the clouds, pillar of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, and so um, it's representing the heavens. Okay, so it would read from right to left. The Hebrew reads right to left, but the sign language would have it read right to left as well. And it goes down this way. And this is a period here. And this is Hebrew. This is in Hebrew. This is Israeli sign language. Okay, Israeli sign language. Okay, so this is again praise him. This is praise and this is him. And this here is, it show again shows the hands are above the head. This is the, the heavens. The heavens praise him. So it's the, yeah. And again, that's the, that's the period. That's how they know the end of the praise. And then again, it's a, what I, this is a shortened version of this. It's not all that, that, uh, a lot of repetition, which kids need when they're first learning to read. So the heavens praise him. And uh, so here we have the, the moon and the sun. So it's the, the moon here, and, then we have, and the sun, again, praise him. Period. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, and again, this shows that this, this sign comes in above the And uh, so, and this is again, it's above the head here. This is the stars that are shining, the bright stars. Praise him. This is Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. And then again, this is repeated in the black. The black shows the back of the hands. White is the end, the palm, and black because it's because it's in more hands because it's a sign that gets more exposed. So the um, the, the black is the, again the back of the hands. And the heavens praise him. Hmm. Hallelujah. So that's it. That's it's short. <laughs> 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 and you're working this out. I mean, you're creating this teaching. Um, so the the psalms with my dear friends, we've been uh, doing drafts of the psalms. We've got over twenty of them now, and this is just uh, one psalm, the beginning of one psalm that we put into it written form uh, like it would be like a primer for kids. And so we have to do all the other psalms, put them in, in sign writing. This is, a, this is a system of writing that was developed uh, a few decades ago. I met the inventor. She was actually a, a dancer. It's an amazing story that um, uh, deaf people were asking her, well, can we do this for sign language? And she developed a system for writing it in sign language. And what, what happens with deaf often if, so they grow up with, um, a very limited language. Mm -hmm. And so if you give them sign language from, from birth, um, the, the ideal situation is if when they're born into a deaf family, they'll learn language. They won't have any lack in language because they're growing up receiving language full time from their parents when sign is given. Mm -hmm. uh, deaf people that don't start learning sign language until later, some of them um, will just won't have as much language. And so even though we teach them how to read English, if they don't have the sign language, they I can only go so far with the, with the English or the, the written form of the, the country's uh, language. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so we are, that's the next stage is we want to bring these um, uh, psalms to publication in video. So we need to, to do translation checking and we need to edit them. And that's a long process too and make sure they're accurate that they make, that it, it lines up with scripture and there's no, nothing missing, nothing false um, in there. And it's a tremendous burden because it's like, well, Lord, I'm fallible. I make mistakes all the time. So, Lord, you have to empower us to, to communicate your heart accurately through the word. So it's a tremendous challenge. It's not just last week. So, um, mm -hmm. Me and the others, I'm praying he's going to bring a, a, a team together. We need the checkers. We need just the, the deaf um, men that will be signing. And we need um, uh, whole, the whole process of uh, then the the videotapers, it's a whole process to get it done. And it's a very, and the whole 
Bible, they take, the whole Bibles take 20, 30 years sometimes. So it's, it's a tremendous project, and I, I am, uh, yeah, I need lots of prayer because I, um, yeah, I just, that's all, that's, we need a whole team of people, so you can need workers, other workers to come alongside, and, and uh, also finances for it. I've, I've also started, uh, this last year overseas, I've been trying to raise funds there, and that hasn't gone well yet. Um, so we need a lot of finances to, to, to help us pray for the death that they'll have the scripture in their sign languages around the world, um, for our team particularly in Israel, and uh, so that they'll know God's heart, because he's not silent. God is not silent. He's revealed. He's given us his yeah. word. We know his heart because he's revealed himself, and, and uh, the Lord doesn't want anyone left out of and heaven to declare the glory of God to all creation. Yes. Yes. And I'll ask you one question here. Uh, you said that a woman cannot appear on video. Elaborate on that just a little bit for us. Um, well, many I mean, many of the secular in Israel, are, the majority are secular Jews, which means they don't have um, uh, that much belief, or they don't, or they don't believe that, that there is a God. I mean, that's, so for them, they don't have any. They don't have any qualms with having with men or women being on video, that's not a problem. But in the, in the religious community, especially the the ultra orthodox yes. community, that's there's the the woman's voice and the woman's uh, um, appearance is, is they're very protective, so that uh, they're because they're they're zealous. They're zealous. Mm. The, major, the majority of them they're zealous for, for for God's heart and God's word, and so they they're extremely protective. They try to be extremely protective that um, so that they don't fall into sin. Like mm -hmm. as you, as we fell into sin at the Golden Calf incident, and so they, they know that and they know the punishment that came out of that, and so they're zealous to try to make sure that they don't fall into sin. And mm -hmm. uh, so for that reason, they're very they're very protective, and they don't want women on video, and uh, and also they don't want the voice of the woman to be something that that would uh, be seductive. And but it's the Holy Spirit that gives. The, it's the Holy Spirit that, that we all need, and He's the one that can um, give that the actual power to. I just well, one of our members just sent us a check for you, so I just cashed it because it's made out to Eastgate. So here is an offering, and if anyone else in here would like to, this is a we've known Bettina for a long time. She's a very godly woman. She's been, how long have you been in Israel? Well, I've been coming and going for years, but I've been living there five, five years. Now. Five years. Yeah, yeah. So we know the good work she does, and uh, so I encourage you, if you would like to give, that this is a good ministry to give to. Thank you, Bettina. Keep us posted what's going on so that we do pray for you. Uh, we kind of need an update, and, and we feel that we can pray for you. Praise God. Well, look who all we got here today. <laughs> Amen. It's a good day. A good day. And I had a good word for me. We're in the book of Numbers. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm probably going to have one more message out of Numbers, possibly two. So, um, yeah, I'll take time to take care of Miss Bettina and bless her, and let's pray for her right now. Yes, Lord. Let's pray for her as a corporate body. Is it okay if I lay hands on you, Bettina? Lord Jesus, we pray for this beautiful soul, this beautiful vessel, with such a heart for your kingdom, a heart for your people. And Lord, that she is sent in as an ambassador of Jesus Christ to Israel. And Lord, that she's bringing the glory of God to the Jewish people. And Lord, that the Jesus in her will reveal the light of Jesus to this people, even when she can't mention his name. So Lord, I pray that you anoint this work that she's doing, that she anoints these books that are coming forth. That, and, and the Lord Jesus, that she will stand in your name and they will see the glory of God in her through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
Okay, numbers. All right, I named it Mobilizing a Nation for War. Uh, we are a nation in spiritual warfare. We, are, we have an election coming up that's going to be a war like we have never seen before. Well, the other election was a bad war. But we're going to see this more and more as the spirit of Antichrist with the spirit of Jezebel continue, is continuing to try to take over our government. Um, I saw briefly this morning um, where Trump is fighting with the Koch brothers. Okay, Koch brothers, Illuminati. Mm -hmm. They so, are the second richest family in America. Right. Right. So um, this this is this is beginning of what I was talking about Sunday, where uh, our our monetary system is going to become a and the Federal Reserve will become a political battle that's coming up before us. We're in a battle with our um, Justice Department. <laughs> there are battles everywhere. So numbers is about mobilizing a nation for war and how long it took to get them there. So, and the Holy Spirit has again led us to the right study for a now time. One of the purposes of num numbering was to get them orderly and organized so that they could move in exact formation God had been training them in the wilderness to follow him, or is training them in the wilderness to follow him, and to get them in formation so that they will, when he says move, they move. Mm -hmm. Each tribe was given its assigned place and task. Yes, in order to feel, fulfill God's kingdom purpose for their nation. See, God is calling his remnant to, the, to authority over the nation. Okay, so they have been taken out of Egypt to fulfill God's kingdom purpose for a nation. A nation that he is going to bring together in Israel out of a people. But this will require faith and trust in God. Which that's what's going to be needed for the church in, uh, in the United States. I mentioned that I went to a prayer meeting Friday, which was tremendous, and the focus of the prayer meeting is the election. But one of the things that they're having to deal with is the apathy of churches and pastors who are afraid to make a stand because they will lose their walk. So it takes, in order to move with God, it takes faith and trust in God. Yeah. And that means you're not worried about what people say or do. It took 40 years of God's providential, miraculous care to bring forth that entire nation with the faith to obey God's purposes. 40 years. So what do we say to the church of the 21st century of your faith for such a time as this? We gotta, it's got to come forward, or, or, it, or it's going to go to another generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, God has raised up a remnant. He's shaken yeah. all of you. You've been through all kinds of fire. Yeah. He's brought you to a place where you're either going on with God or, you know, what else you got? Yeah. It's going to take faith and trust. Mm -hmm. Numbers covers a little less than 40 years. 38 from Mount Sinai to Jordan. The purpose of Numbers is to give an account of the 40 years that Israel wandered in the wilderness. To the natural eye, the book of Numbers is one of wandering. But to the eye of faith and to the spiritual eye, the book is one of God teaching us divine direction. Numbers 9, 20 through 23. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents, and at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. We've got to be in that place, church, mm -hmm. where, we, where we are so sensitive to the Spirit of God mm -hmm. that we move when God says move. If we don't, mm -hmm. we're going to miss God's purpose at that time. Now, he might pick us up later on, but 
uh, and in Revelation 7, 17, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, mm -hmm. and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. God numbers and aligns the tribes and the priests to record the two generations. At the beginning, he records the old generation, and at the end, he records the new generation. After receiving the law, as seen in Exodus and Leviticus, and being numbered at Mount Sinai, the old generation came to Kadesh Barnea, and I may not be pronouncing that right since we have a Hebrew scholar here. Did I say that right, Bettina? Kadesh Barnea? Huh? How did you say it? Oh, that's okay. Just, I'm just checking. Just checking. Okay, but this was the gateway to the promised land. There, they rejected through unbelief. God took them there and he said, this is the land I gave to you. Now I want you to go in. He set the 12 spies in. They came back. Whoa, whoa, with us. They got big giants in the land and we can't take it. And, oh my goodness, they care enough. That, this is too big. And so they rejected God. Mm. They rejected God's ability. Mm -hmm. They rejected God saying, I do, you don't have to do this. I'll take care of it. They said, no, we're not going to do this through unbelief. And, uh, um, and because of their sin of disobedience, they were caused to wander and perish in the wilderness. I think there was one, one time in there that it says that a hundred of them died a day and they were so busy burying their corpses um, the, actually, I don't think I wrote down the numbers, but there was 600,000 coming out of uh, Egypt, and there were 600,000 at the end of the four years. They did not increase in numbers because they had so much dying going on out there in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Numbers 1433. Your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Now God has not changed. We can either obey God or we can die in the wilderness. That's right. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. They provoked God, yeah. to whom swore he that they should not enter his rest. When God asks you to do something by faith, you're not going to be able to do it in your natural understanding. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to do it in your natural feelings. It's going to take faith to walk it out and it'll take obedience to God. And this is where people miss God. They want God to accommodate himself to their feelings. Kadash mm -hmm. Barnea is the gateway out of the wilderness into the promise of God. We will all stand before God, <coughs> excuse me, in our Kadash Barnea at some point in time in your life if you're going to walk with God. There's a place where you're going to stand before God and he's going to tell you that if you will do what I tell you to do, I'm going to give you all the promises that I have promised you all of my life and all the promises that are in the Bible. Yes. Will we have the faith to believe God as Caleb and Joshua did and inherit the promises of God? Or will we die in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Mm -hmm. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So even though you're bearing fruit, you're going to get purged because he wants more fruit out of it. Mm -hmm. Under the leadership of Moses, Joshua, and Caleb, the new generation is raised up to enter Canaan. Canaan. Okay, I'm going to read Numbers 32, 7 through 15. Why will you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them? Thus your fathers did when I sent them away from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. This is God talking. But when they went up to the valley of Eskol and saw the land, 
They discouraged the heart of the children of Israel so that they did not go into the land which the Lord had given them. We cannot discourage people. We have to be an encouragement. Yeah. All the fruit of our mouth, our mouth has to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. What we speak and what we utter must be fruit. Mm -hmm. If it's not, we're bringing discouragement to people. None of the men who came up from Egypt from 20 years old and above shall see the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they have not wholly followed me. Now, it came to my mind, and you will remember uh, when, we were, when I was preaching Sunday morning that Jeremiah got his um, commission and his call at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. Okay? So from 20 up, God's holding them accountable to answer his call. I, I'm, I don't know, I'm not making doctrine there. It's just a note I make, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they have not wholly followed me except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and the Kenzanite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. The Lord's anger was aroused against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was gone. If you turn away from following him, he will once again leave them in the wilderness, and you will destroy all his people. Our government is in a wilderness. In faithfulness to his covenant, God raised up and numbered a new generation of believers and prepared them for entering to land, the land and to prepare and equip them for war. That's the whole reason he was equipping them. That's the whole reason he was organizing them into the 12 tribes. Because this tribe had to take this part of the land, down this king, the 31 kings, remember? This tribe had to take down this one. This tribe was sent in to take this one. And this tribe was sent in to take that one. The history of Numbers begins where the book of Exodus left off. Numbers is the book of the wanderings and testing of the wilderness. Every person in this room has either been in the wilderness, come out of it, or you're still there. <laughs> because <laughs> there's no really, <laughs> except Jesus. Jesus may not be <laughs> shall be established. Now we say this often, but it is prophets, prophets, and you shall prosper. Okay. But he shall also establish you. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. That means you've got to follow the Lord to be established. And to believe the prophets, and you shall prosper. 
Now, we have a lot of not believing prophets going on. It's kind of hard to tell who the real ones are and who the wannabe ones are. Mm -hmm. But if you know that someone is a seasoned prophet and they don't speak unless God speaks, mm -hmm. if you will walk in that in faith, and it will cost you faith, mm -hmm. you're going to prosper. Yes. I've been made aware, especially this is after the conference, I found sick the first almost whole week last week, so I didn't get all my attacks until after I, um, that th they knew I was feeling a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> For but see what, wait, what, 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 what attacks going in, attacks going out, it's, what I, it's my measuring stick of what I know God did in spirit. The Satan is going to manifest whatever mm -hmm. happened in spirit. But it's really started Sunday night. And I'm going to use Pat Lee here, and then probably the whole world's listening to me out there, and I don't care. Pat Lee was sent into the office of prophet by right. Roger Teal Sunday night at my home mm -hmm. under a tremendous visitation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was under a visitation where he was weeping and crying and falling out, and she was weeping and crying and falling out, and the Spirit of God came on him. He set Pat Lee into the office of prophet mm -hmm. in my living room. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God was so strong. Mm -hmm. But there was some, let's say, who didn't get that established this time. And the attacks began, even at my table afterwards. Mm -hmm. Because of the jealousy of that, of that being sealed into that office. Hmm. Okay, we're going somewhere here. Now, this, none of this is my problem, just so y'all know. Just we're gonna get to that. Um, oh, how did I get to this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, all right. The Lord your God and you shall be established. Okay, God has a call on your life. Your call. When you were born, you were called. Many are called, but few are chosen. And you will have, and you, and you've got to, and God will send a prophet to, to uh, seal you into what you're being called to do in your time. Amen. So I've been made aware that faith is weak among many Christians. Mm -hmm. Many only believe, and I'm not talking about Eastgate Christians, okay? Many only believe what they can see with the natural eye, the circumstances that are around them, and are the voices of the majority. The voices of the majority make them right. This is the pundits that are going on in your TV. They think if they can be the loudest, they talk the longest, and they can give them more facts, that their voice as the majority, that people will hear them and think they're right. That's right. The voice of the majority will not make you right with God. Right. Amen. And it, then it won't make you right. It, I don't care how right you are with the crowd. That's right. You've got to be on God's track, and it usually costs you the crap. Mm -hmm. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith says God will do what he says. Yes. He will do, and he will supply all our needs, Bettina, according to his riches and glory, to that which he has sent us to do. Yes. What he has commissioned and sent us to do, the provision is going to be already there. We don't have to worry and look around and say, where is it coming from, Lord, and why is it not here? And when is it coming? It will be there at God's appointed time when you need it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go around and tell people what your financial situation is. You don't have to do any of that stuff because God, if God has sent you in it, God is going to provide for it. That's Amen. Right. And if we sit around, and I'm talking to some of you preachers out there, if you sat around every day and you worried about where the money's going to come, that you're going to pay your bills, then you need to get with God because he has the money and it's not going to come from you trying to get manipulate the people. Yes. Amen. 
but he still got a hold of you. Mm -hmm. Not God. When God's people fail to enter the promises of God, it is because of unbelief and disobedience. God desires that you prosper. God desires that he, Jesus Christ, move through you and reveal the glory of the kingdom of God to the whole earth. Amen. Yeah. And we are in obedience to what God has called us to do, and it will cost us our flesh. Mm -hmm. It will cost us our desires. It will cost you everything you have. Mm -hmm. But when you do it, you're going to prosper in everything that you do. For we who have believed do enter into rest. And let me tell you, the rest of God and the peace of God mm -hmm. is greater than any pearl, any diamonds, yes. Yes. any foreign trips, any Amen. big houses, Amen. any wealth that the world has. You can't buy the peace of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And they to whom it was first preached did not enter in because of unbelief. But God will always raise up a believing people. He had two. When Moses sent them in, Caleb and Joshua, they had two out of the whole 600,000 plus. Jesus Christ is seen in the book of Numbers as the tabernacle, the sanctuary in the wilderness. And we can take the whole tabernacle and teach it and show how everything in it reveals Jesus Christ. He is the Passover lamb. He is the fiery bright cloud. He is the smitten rock. He is the son of man lifted up as the serpent of brass. I may preach on that Sunday. I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. He is the star out of Jacob. 2 Peter 1, 10 through 11. Rather and give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and elections sure. That means you can't bail out once you put your shoulder to the plow. You can't bail out on the first time you are pushed beyond measure. Mm -hmm. And you can't bail out when 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 people start getting trying to get to you. God will use Satan. Mm -hmm. I mean, Satan will use demons to try to get to people to cause you to say enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yes. Tries to wear the saints out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the first numbering took place at Sinai. Oh, I do have the numbers here. Uh, this census showed 603,550 males above the age of 20, exclusive of the Levites. Another census 38 years later showed 601,730. And this mobilized the nation for war. You see how, I mean, we got 40 years here, and they only increased by a few hundred people because they were dying by the hundred out there in the wilderness, and they'd have to dig graves every day. But that's just the males. Huh? That's just the males. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see how they got in this trouble. Because yes. we don't want to go there. <laughs> the Levites were excluded from being numbered and prepared for war. Mm. You know, he said, you don't number the Levites. God was not preparing the Levites for war because he had them to take care of the tabernacle. Okay, let's look at 11, 1 through 3. They complained about the way that the Lord led them. <laughs> this displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. A God does not change. In him is no shadow of turning. And the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the only reason much of the church is not consumed today by fire is because of the grace of the cross right. mm -hmm. and the blood of Jesus. 
the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. He called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Four through nine, they complained about food. <laughs> <laughs> this story among the mixed multitude who, who fell a lusting. The mixed multitude fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again. Now you can't get you can't line up with that mixed multitude. You're gonna have to stay in God's people and stay in place where God has put you. Okay, so the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we freely ate in Egypt. The cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlics. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all besides this man before our eyes. Well, I'm telling you what. Uh, someone maybe said this at the conference or recently. They get this man a free every day. They're not having to work for that. They're not having to go out and dig mm -hmm. out and, and, and fish. And it just shows up. Right. Where they get in the promised land, they're going to have to plow. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to plant. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to gather to get this. Okay, 10 through 15. Now we're getting into the part where God was preaching to me. Moses lost his patience <laughs> and pushed the panic button. I've heard you tell when I was, had the church at Baton Rouge, I had, Shanna had, had married and gone off, and I had turned her bedroom into my office. I get on the floor of that bedroom on my knees, and I say, Lord, please don't let me hit this rock too hard. <laughs> God working on me. Okay, so what he did, he exaggerated his responsibilities, losing sight of his God given enablement. Okay. If, if, if things start getting to you, you've got to go back to your God given enablement, whatever it is that God's called you to do. Mm hmm. Since being called as a pastor, I often pray before the Lord to let me not commit the sin of Moses. I prayed about that long down the road. Now, that was one of the tests that I had to go through not once but multiple times these past two weeks. So that means we're, I'm getting ready to go into something. I think I passed. I think I passed the test. <laughs> After I saw it in the word and I said, oh, Lord. There was about four or five traps set for me. Wow. And I could have fallen into that, but I'm going to tell you where Moses messed up. And I said, Lord, I believe. I believe I passed this. You Maybe. didn't use that rod. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not making this about me, but. Okay. And when you, and, and I was, and I, if you're sick, you're not up to your, you know, I'm better now, but. You know, yeah, Satan's not going to hit you when you're well. That's right. So maybe May Moses wasn't feeling very well either. Who knows? When he <laughs> I'm not going to judge him. Maybe he felt he was sick that day. But Moses was complaining to the Lord. So this is what Moses said to the Lord. Why have you afflicted your servant? <laughs> And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people upon me? <laughs> 600,000 of them plus the mixed multitude, plus the women and the children. Have I conceived all these people? I need the word. I need the word of God to you. Have I begotten them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom, or change diapers and nurse them, as a nursing father bears the sucking child 
unto the land which you swore unto their fathers. Mm -hmm. Poor Moses. <laughs> he should have known he was in trouble when he started talking. Poor Moses. <laughs> Greatly. Uh -huh. 16 through 30. The Lord said to Moses, <coughs> Gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take the spirit which is upon you and put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you do not have to bear it alone. Then 31 through 35 comes the correction. God bringing correction for all this. God sends quails, but he also sends a plague. Mm -hmm. He answers their call for meat. Right. But he sends a plague with it. A wind went forth from the Lord and brought quails from the sea. And let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side. Can you imagine how many quail that one was? Round about the camp. It was two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Oh my goodness. The people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day. They gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers. I didn't look up homers, see how much that was, but I guess it's a lot. And they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. While the flesh was yet between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. He called the name of that place, Turok Hatava, because they, there they buried the people that loved it. Lord has had me for many years and you've heard me pray that the fire, you know, the priest had the fire pan before the altar and when they would sprinkle the fire pan, oh, fire pan over the land it would break the plague off. Well I have prayed for years for the Lord restore that anointing because the cross uh, is the, brazen, is the um, brazen altar and, um, brazen, and so that should that power should belong to the church through the cross of Jesus Christ. So I've asked God to restore it to the church. But I got a revelation when I did this. One of the reasons why there are plagues on the earth is because of the sin of murmuring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because of what? Oh, the sin of murmuring. Oh, which is the same as it. Complaining. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, the, the first plague that he brought on them, I think I didn't look it up to see if it's the first one, was because of their murmuring. Yeah. So, it's, it's not enough just to sprinkle the fire pan from the cross of Jesus Christ. We've got to repent of murmuring when there are plagues on the earth. Wow. Ooh. Mm. Good. Okay. But they continued to murmur even after all this. Through the rebellion of Miriam, which caused the cloud to depart until that situation was healed. Oh, my. And a, Mir a Miriam and Aaron, actually. And a cloud departed. She was smitten with leprosy. Aaron repented and Moses interceded. The camp did not move ahead until this was dealt with. Cora and his company, and I mentioned them Sunday, were an influential group of ambitious and envious men. There are many groups and many mega churches that are ambitious and envious and they control situations. We can say that the Koch brothers mm -hmm. have the spirit of Korah and his company because they want to use their wealth and their influence to control the elections. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, we need to break that spirit of Korah yes. off of the Koch brothers. Yes. Okay. They challenge the authority of Moses and attempted to intrude into the priestly office. And we can say that Moses is God's leader that he has chosen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? We're dealing with the spirit of Korah here. Mm. 
a lot of the spirit of the core of the uh, uh, moderates. They're challenging the authority of God's appointed. Mm -hmm. The glory of the Lord appeared and dealt with the three ringleaders who mm -hmm. were swallowed up by an earthquake and went down a line into Sheol. There seems to be a gap between Numbers 19 and 20. And after 38 years of wandering, they found themselves back in the same place, Kadesh. Okay. Mm. We heard about going around and around the mountain. I'm sure you didn't get this far to go around and around the mountain, okay? God will take you back to the same place that he dealt with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen people that God said in churches, not not. He's gay, okay? I mean, just in churches. Okay? They get offended over something. And mostly they were offended because God didn't do what they wanted him to do when the pastor maybe told them and so on, you know. But they're not going to go on with what God has for them until they go back to that place and get it right with God, not with the pastor. See, they, they got issues with God. Not with the pastor or whoever. The problem is in them and it's God dealing with them. Now I'm talking if the pastor's lined up with God and the church is lined up with God. Not everybody is, but okay. Cor um, the murmuring in chapter 29, 2 through 6 is significant. And this is the first recorded trial and failure of the new generation, showing they were no better than their fathers. Chapter 20 opens with the death of Miriam and closes with the death of Aaron and tells of the failure of Moses in between. Death and failure is connected with wilderness wanderings. Obey God, repent of sin, and get out of the wilderness. If you get into trouble, there's conflict. But the first thing you do is not defend yourself or try to cover. See, Satan always tries to cloak over the sin with something else so that, the, so that you don't have to face up to your sin. Mm -hmm. And people will try to defend it, mm -hmm. uh, defend their sin rather than repent, repent of it. Yeah. Okay, so when, when you get in trouble and when you know you're in trouble, it's when you've got pain in your soul mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel good. You better start repenting right there. Yeah. And don't try to cover it up. Assume that you need to get right with God. I don't care if 500 people try to walk all over you. Mm -hmm. If you get right with God, let him deal with the other people. Right? Amen. And he will. Yes. And he will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moses' sin is found in spotting the rock twice in his anger. See, God told him to speak to the rock. Right. He didn't tell him to hit it. Right. Mm -hmm. And he only hit it once, he hit it twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's read that part. If you're following with me in the Bible, Numbers 20, 7 through 13. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod. What is this rod? This is the rod that he had in Egypt, the part of the Red Sea. Yes. Okay, this is his rod of authority, that is governmental authority that was given to him. Take the rod. You and your brother Aaron gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and the animals. So Moses took the rod from the Lord as he commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock and he said to them, here now, you rebels. See, he's mad. <laughs> he's going to get them straight now. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? See, he's still mad at them because they're a bunch of nursing babies. 
Then Moses lifted his hand, struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me, to hollow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Moses was five. And Aaron. And Aaron. And Aaron died shortly thereafter. Of course, we know that Moses is still pretty high. He appeared with uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Right. So, hey, no, I'm not going to touch Moses. <laughs> like I said, maybe he had a bad day. Maybe he wasn't feeling well that day. <laughs> <laughs> and Mirabah means pleading, contention, strife, and quarrel, and that's what God named that place. Because we all got to be careful of this, y'all. We, if murdering against God, not believing Him, disobeying Him, can cost you. You are uh, the the great the great blessings of God. We have to walk bent over before God. And I can tell you, Satan got a trap for you every day. Mm -hmm. That's right. Moses spoke in the heat of his spirit, mm. as though he he was the primary object of their murmurings. He interjected himself in there. He took it on himself. They weren't murmuring at Moses. They were murmuring at God. Now they might have been using Moses to murmur at. But see, Moses was obeying God. So if this is coming against God, it's not coming against Moses. But Moses interjects himself in there and takes it personal. Y'all hear me? So Moses sought the vindication of himself as the servant of God and not the vindication of God. And this is why it cost him so heavily. Tell you, I got a hold of this last time. I have a question about that scripture that I've always wondered about. It said, um, God says, because you didn't believe me. Do you think it has something to do with unbelief? Like, yeah. even with unbelief? Yeah, the same. Yeah. See, he took, he, uh, God just told him, Moses, I just want you to speak to the rock. Yeah. Uh, but see, he didn't do what God said. He, Okay, when he didn't believe God, what for was it? This is on God, not on Moses. Mm -hmm. These people are on me, Moses, not on you. And Moses is taking it on himself. Mm -hmm. That's where it's unbelief is. Yeah. Putting them in God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where it's unbelief is. <coughs> he's saying that he's going to have to deliver all these people. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Get all these people who are angry people who are misbehaving to act right. That's where a pastor does wrong. Mm -hmm. You can act. I don't care what you do. Amen. You're between you and God. That's it. Yeah, Thank that's you, Jesus. All I do is preach. That's it. I'm not going to police you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Our church heard, heard a powerful message Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Everybody that was there is accountable for what they heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're accountable for this. Nice crowd today. <laughs> <laughs> God said a nice crowd in here today. Yes. <laughs> Loving it. Someone gave Jesus a word. I think it was uh, my name Pastor Kate when he was here. And all this that 
Hank Zeus is sitting on you. All of us going to speak to him one of these days, and then he's going to be accountable for all of it. <laughs> Praise God. Let me get back here because I'm not through with Moses here. Because it's so important. I'm going to say that again. And I posted this on Facebook this morning. Moses sought the vindication of himself as the servant of God and not the vindication of God. And that was Moses' thing. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because Moses smote the rock in anger and self-will instead of speaking to it in faith and obedience. Mm -hmm. That's where he lacked the faith. See, God didn't tell him to hit that rod. But he did tell him to go get the rod. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the rod was his authority to speak to the rock. That was his governmental authority to speak to the rock. Yeah. But see, he hid it in anger and self-will. Mm. There it is. He was, he was taking God's, see, God gave him the authority to do what, do what God told him to do. Yeah. Okay, that's the only authority he had. That's what God told him to do. But he took God's authority on himself. Mm-mm-mm. mm, -mm. mm, -mm. God still let the water come out. Like God could have said, yeah. you were disobedient and then made Moses look bad. But God allowed Moses to look good. But God, but then he said, you didn't honor me. You didn't look. So Moses actually made God look bad with his anger. But God because he's God's him. servant, he's God's instrument. Because mm. God could have just said, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah, he mm. still got the water. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was going to deal with Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses, see, Moses had already complained to him before the quake. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. When he said, oh, poor me, God, look what all you put on me. That's when he said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it brought judgment on the people. But see, he was still carrying that attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this is good. Mm -hmm. Because you know why? People, we can't get stuck at Kadesh. Where is it? Kadesh Barnea. We can't get stuck there in our personal lives or in the church. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to go on with God. There has to be a Caleb and a Joshua generation up on the earth Amen. who is going to believe God and obey God, and they're going to move forward. Yes. Complain, that's good, Joanne. That's good Pentecostal preaching. Oh, Lord, help me. God was compelled to vindicate himself by using Moses as an example instead of an instrument. Ouch. Say that again. Okay, God was compelled to vindicate himself by using Moses as an example to us, to everybody, mm -hmm. instead of as an instrument. You see, we want to be used as instruments of God. Yeah. We don't take God, God's business. You see, it's God's business. Amen. Mm -hmm. This church is God's business. Yes. This church is kingdom business. Amen. I'm just an instrument. Mm -hmm. You're just an instrument. Yes. We do not have to vindicate ourselves when people interject us into their controversies with God. Okay. This track was set for me, let's say, recently. Uh, someone who has been duking out, and no one in this room, okay, this individual has been duking out a controversy with God for many years, in tears. 
in tears. Mm -hmm. But they will not. They are covering that controversy with God by um, trying to explain it away to get their way. Mm -hmm. To get God. They're, they're trying to cover it. Okay. So they will fight. And what if they wanted to pick a fight with me, they said, thank God it didn't work. I didn't fall in that trap. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because, see, if they can get God's ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, my. That's it. Oh my. I'm talking about Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan in a person. The devil. Yes. Right. If they can get God's minister mm -hmm. into their controversy with God, then we commit the sin of Moses. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Right. That is so good. Oh, dear. Hmm. Hmm. I repent. Amen. <laughs> See, they got a controversy with God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We just declare God. Mm -hmm. But we don't get personally mm -hmm. into their controversy. Mm -hmm. Hey, between you and God, I'm not Amen. You're recognizing the trap. We mm -hmm. have to recognize the trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. I sprung the trap. But I didn't read about what I did with the test. Yeah. It was a test. Because mm -hmm. I didn't read about what happened until last night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, did I pass? It will wear you out. Huh? It will wear you out. That's the whole plan. Ridiculous mm -hmm. stuff. universal and, and personally. If we are to move, if the body of Christ is to move into the next powerful move of God that has to transform a nation, that where we are going to pray and we're going to change the focus, the direction of a nation because of our prayers and our walk, we cannot get stuff like Moses did at Kadesh Barim. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And 